Hey people, it's Anelia, or you can call me Island Curl, and today is part two of the hair typing three-part series, Hair Porosity. Now, this is my favorite section of hair typing because this is what mainly determines what products will work for your hair and what products won't. It determines how your hair will react to certain products, and it will determine how your hair absorbs moisture. It determines a lot of things, okay? And that is why it is super important to know your hair porosity. I will be explaining the three types of hair porosity, how you can determine your hair porosity, and products that will work best for each type of porosity. So the big question I'm sure you're wondering, what is hair porosity? Porosity is the hair's ability to absorb and retain moisture. Hair can be low porosity, normal or medium porosity, or high porosity. A key fact to keep in mind, hair porosity can be genetic and it can change due to chemical processes like bleaching the hair, for instance. Let's begin with low porosity hair. With this hair type, the cuticle is so tightly compacted that it makes it difficult for moisture to penetrate the hair shaft. There are a few ways to tell if you have low porosity hair. Water beads up on the hair strands when it's wet. It takes a while for hair to become fully drenched. Products sit on top of the hair for a long while before it dries, and even then it may not absorb all the product. And it's difficult for the hair to absorb moisture, but when it does, it retains that moisture for a long time. Caring for low porosity hair can be tricky, but here are a few tips to help that process along. You want to use lightweight products because they'll absorb into the hair easier, whereas heavy products will only sit on top of your hair and then flake when it's dry because the hair can't absorb it. You also want to use the LCO method, leave-in conditioner, cream, and oil. This method of moisturizing allows you to coat your hair with layers of moisture, which is your leave-in conditioner and your curling cream. Then you seal that moisture in with oil. Now, I'm no longer a big fan of using oil on my hair, but I'll save you the why for another video. Another good tip is to stay away from protein. That means staying away from protein treatments, protein deep conditioners, and protein leave-in conditioners. If there's any other form of protein in it and you have low porosity hair, it is your enemy. Now let's be clear about this. Because all hair is made up of keratin, which is a protein, we all do still need to include protein in our hair regimen. However, if you have low porosity hair, you're going to need way less protein and a lot more moisture. I can't tell you how often to include protein into your regimen because every head of curls is different. So you'll have to decide that. You have to learn your hair and understand what it needs. Moving on, I'm one of those people who, when I was learning about hair porosity, watched every YouTube video available at the time on the topic. And everyone would say, use lightweight products. And I was like, okay, sis, lightweight products like what? Give me some options. But since they didn't give me any options, I'll give you some. Of course, I'm going to put Camille Rose on the top of my list. Their products are extremely lightweight and they smell like vanilla, sprinkles, rainbows, cupcakes, and heaven, yes. And when I say Camille Rose, I mean everything from their hair milk to their butters to their deep conditioners and everything. Everything, sis. Mayal Organics is another great line. Their products are generally lightweight and have really good ingredients. As for oils, you want to stay away from olive oil and for God's sake, please get rid of the coconut oil. Get rid of it. Oils like grapeseed, almond, and jojoba oil are perfect for low porosity hair. On to medium porosity hair. There isn't really much to say about medium porosity hair except if you have it, the cuticles of your hair are perfect. And I don't know anybody with perfect cuticles or hair. With medium porosity, hair easily absorbs and retains moisture. I really don't have anything more to say about that. Lastly, we have high porosity hair. The cuticles of high porosity hair have many holes in them which allows moisture to absorb easily and quickly, but it also allows moisture to escape just as fast. So how do you tell if you have high porosity hair? Simple! Firstly, your hair absorbs moisture and products quickly and easily and they don't sit on top of your hair. Secondly, your hair dries out fairly quickly, causing your hair to frizz faster. Another way to determine if you have high porosity hair is if chemical processing like coloring is easier on the hair. And finally, curly hair is already naturally prone to breakage and split ends, but highly porous hair is extremely prone to it because of how easily moisture escapes the cuticle. I have some tips for high porosity hair. Tip number one, have a good balance of moisture and protein in your hair regimen. 
Although most times high porosity hair prefers more protein to help rebuild it from damage, it all depends on what your hair is telling you it needs more of. Tip 2. After deep conditioning on wash day, rinse with cold water to fill in some of the holes in the cuticle. That way, some moisture is retained. Tip 3. Use heavy butters to aid with filling in the holes in the hair's cuticles. Tip 4. Use the LOC method. The process will go moisture seal moisture. That way there's moisture sealed in the hair shaft and moisture sitting on top of the hair shaft. Now let's talk hair products. Like I said before, high porosity hair depends on heavy products to fill in the gaps in the holes in the hair's cuticle to retain moisture. With that being said, this list will consist of a lot of thick and heavy products. Now I'm low porosity so I had to do some research for this one. YouTuber Natural Rain, who has beautiful high porosity hair, recommended some of these products, and I would trust her advice if I were high porosity. First on the list is Mango Butter and Shea Butter. These butters are heavy and they're moisturizing, which makes them perfect for high porosity hair. They can also substitute for oils. Second on the list is Mish Beauty Quench Twisting Butter. I've heard a lot of good things about Mish Beauty products, so it may be worth a try, especially if you're high porosity. Third on the list, jojoba oil. Jojoba oil is an amazing oil for any hair porosity and it works perfectly as a sealant. Jojoba oil is so amazing because it's the most similar to the oil that our hair naturally produces. So a quick recap. With low porosity hair, it's difficult for moisture to enter but hard for moisture to escape. With medium porosity, your hair is basically perfect and I personally think Medium porosity hair is a myth. And finally, with high porosity hair, it's easy for moisture to penetrate the hair and moisture easily escapes the hair. So we all know how difficult it can be to understand our hair and the ways I describe to help determine hair porosity may not give you as accurate a result as you may hope. But that's okay. There are other ways to determine your hair porosity. My personal favorite is to conduct a float test. The struggle. The struggle. Get in there. There we go. When conducting the float test, if the strand of hair that you placed in the water floats, then you're low porosity. If it sinks, then you're high porosity. Now, I can't tell you what it does if you have medium porosity because, like I said, medium porosity is a myth. It's a myth. But yeah, that concludes part two of my three-part series on hair type. Be sure to check the description box below to take the hair type quiz. And that's it for today. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Bye, y'all.